testing one, two. All right, excuse me, sir. Um, could you just to check my levels? Could you just say, um, well, I, could you say the title of your new film? That would be great for my levels. Eyes wide shut. Eyes wide shut. Eyes wide shut. Okay. I'm not using a clapperboard here, but it's a title, don't I think it's an incredible title, and I that might be actually be a great way to start off the interview if we, to talk about your. I mean, we could do it in reverse like that. Talk about your latest work first, whatever you want to do. I know it's why we had this delay because of your editing. So yeah, you can get into it. So this is um. Well, the 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 latest film is a culmination of just years of. Uh, Innovation, risk taking, regrets. Well, well, well. Before we even get into eyes wide shut, I mean, you, when you look at your incredible body of work, you must be very proud. I mean, uh, as you sit here. I mean, yes, but of course, like most perfectionists, I, w I, I often wish I could have done things differently. Like what? I mean, people think you are. Films are the best films ever made by an American filmmaker. Well, is there a certain film that you would change, or something about your career, or what is it? Um, well, Spartacus. Okay. Because I allowed Kirk Douglas to just have too much control and power. Without a political issue, or up to his the hole in his chin with just ego. Okay. But uh, you know. Um. One thing, uh, sir. And I know. For me, I hate to tell you anything about filmmaking because. You'll, I'll never know one eighth or one any fraction of what you know. But if you could look at me because of the lighting, I don't want you to go into the darkness because I'm lighting you sort of. I didn't even know you were over there, but okay. okay, okay well, just follow the voice. Okay. Um. First of all, I want to thank you for doing this interview. I know you rarely give interviews. And That's true. May I ask, like in general, why are you so reluctant to give interviews? Is there a reason in general? Or? Well, uh, I think it's because. Well, for one thing, I'm a shy person. Okay. For another thing, I'm so uh, preoccupied with my work that I don't like interruptions and distractions. And I'm always working, even though it seems as if I only put out a film every once every three years or so. I'm not as prolific as a lot of other filmmakers. But... Uh, the amount of work that goes into each film takes so much time that I don't have a whole lot of time for anything else. Okay. Um, because you, you, one would think that in making films, part and parcel of that process, since films are our business, that for you to go out and do interviews would help your box office. I guess you don't really care yes, about well, that's that. What, that's what they tell me, you know, but I don't really care. <laughs> okay. I, I, I figure my films... I, at the risk of sounding, you know, uh, full of myself, uh, play to a specific audience, and the, that type of audience isn't too influenced by advertising anyway. Okay. They go, they seek things out rather than waiting for them to come to them. Okay. And I don't expect to have a whole lot of people outside. That it's nice if you get them, but I'm not going to seek them out because I think my uh, my films, as I said, attract a specific target audience. Fair enough. Well-educated, uh, you know, serious-minded. The elite. Yeah, you, for lack of a better word. Okay. Um, now, again, I... There is, there is kind of a connotation, a negative connotation to the elite, which is why I like to avoid the word, but if the shoe fits. Um... Again, I, I profusely thank you for granting me this interview. I'm a nobody. No need to be profuse. Okay, well, I, I, I am just sincerely thankful and, and grateful for this opportunity, but I know you have some ground rules, and while I know my attorney and your attorney have gone back and forth a dozen times, just so uh, just we're on, so we're on film here, um, and I'm shooting on, on, on 35 and 16, just as a backup, but... Um, the point is that uh, you you want me to hold this footage for 15 years, not not from now, but for, and it's 1999, spring. Uh, but you 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 want me to hold it 15 years after your death before I can show it. That am I clear on that condition? That sounds about right. Okay. And is there a reason? I mean, just you you don't want to deal with the reactions to this type of interview. I mean, 
Is there a reason that? Oh, I just like to be devilish, create suspense. Okay. So like Hitchcock, one of my idols. But anyway. Uh, okay. You said uh, to my attorney, your attorney says my attorney, well, actually your eight attorney said to my one attorney, <laughs> um, that that you want 15 years between the exhibition of this footage, raw or edited, you're from your death 15 years going forward. I mean, it, no, and I'll take whatever. I'll take it if it was 100 years. I'll take the interview no matter. But I'm not negotiating here. Just, but why, why 15 years of a delay? Just, I mean, we're just. I think this will be an incredible interview. But it, we're just discussing your films. I mean, it's not like you know, uh, we're not doing cold fusion, you know, formulas well, here. Though. Um... So, so sir, so I understand it. 15 years. From the day of your death, which, God forbid, I mean, I hope you make 80 more films or, well, at your rate, three more films or whatever. Yeah, right. But can you, why, why 15 years, and may I ask? I mean, why? Why the delay? Why the, why the moratorium for 15 years on, on this footage? Well, um, I'm sensitive to uh, the lives of others around me. I don't want my family to be affected by this. Uh, I don't want any reputations to be sullied. Uh, I just think it's better if it if it's delayed. Okay, that explains the delay. It start it started to get to me after a while. Um, what 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 do you mean? The um, what good? I I've always been conflicted about it, I guess, but I wasn't conscious of it until later years later um you know at first i was just blown away by the uh uh the uh, the, the the chance the uh, the opportunity the challenge of of making this this film and and, and i went into it like it was a regular film like a, 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 a another production of mine um not thinking too much about uh, the long-term effects that the, the what it would mean uh, to to society if ever if it was ever discovered. Mm -hmm. um, what what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You're referring to something. I I jeez, uh, oh, how do I put this? And you and your attorney had me sign, sign the non-disclosure agreement. I mean, I. It just seemed like a lot of pomp and circumstance for, again, I hope this is an extraordinary interview, and I hope I get insights no one's ever seen. Okay. But what's the big... Um... Well, uh, well, regardless of, of, of uh, uh, despite what people think of artists, we do have consciences, some of us. And, um, I mean, up to a point, you're like... Uh, the characters in that Ingmar Bergman movie, like Persona or something, where you just disregard everything human to get the art, just to get the art. You 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 discount relationships and uh, morals and everything, ethics, to get the art. But there are occasions where you cross the line and you might not regret it at first but you do years later and i made some mistakes beginning in the 60s uh which are just lately catching up with me in my mind my conscience okay all right, I, I, you slept with the wrong person to get on the casting couch, or you, no, not, nothing that mundane. Okay. Um, you mean like in order to get into Hollywood, you you made certain compromises? Or no, I was already in Hollywood. I was already established. Okay. Um, but I had uh, I had been contacted by certain individuals who were impressed by, especially by my films in general, but particularly by Dr. Strangelove, which is also one of my favorites that I've done. Dare I say this? Okay. While I was making 2001 A Space Odyssey, I was contacted by people from NASA. It blew my mind. They, they were interested in... Uh, 
in my uh, manufacturing. Mm. They they wanted my participation in a certain project. Okay. Um, like like something. I thought at first maybe it was some kind of documentary. Uh, but the uh, I began to realize after a while they wanted me to perpetrate a fraud okay. on the American public. Okay, th this is like a long-standing urban legend kind of rumor. Are you referring to the, you know, it's an internet rumor. I don't know how much you get on the internet. You know, I know it's sort of a new thing, but it's out there. Are you talking about the the moon landings issue? Yes, well, it was, it was hard for me to uh, get it out, so I appreciate your help. Yes, it was. Uh, and look, it, it was the it was the moon moon landing. And they they contacted you to to you're 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 saying that the rumors are true that you actually were involved in in in, in why what, what part of the rumors are true? I, uh, the fabrication of what? I mean, of what? A a a a a a fantasy, a a a fictional moon landing. It was not real. It was what? not real. The, the the moon landing in 69, which was two years before my birth. You're, is total it, fiction. Total fiction. Yes. With my help. With my with my aid. And it, right. and it is that, bothering me. Okay, back up, back up. Uh, what, what, all right. Why would they fake? Uh, why? Why? I'll just say that. <laughs> what are you talking about? I mean, why would the government ever want or need to do? I'm completely unclear on what. What you're talking? I mean, I'm not that I don't believe you. I'm just saying, what do you? Why would the government need to do something like that? Well, you would get your best answer from the government, or maybe your worst answer. But um, well, what they tell you, I and mean, what was the, why? Why did they need you? Why don't they just use the astronauts? <laughs> they didn't go. I, I, I'm just completely unclear on this, Mr. Cooper. Why? Why fake something? I saw. I mean, I didn't see. It, I wasn't there, but I saw a rocket take off. I'm not saying going to the moon is easy, but what? well, of course it had a lot to do with ego and and uh, the Russians and what have you, uh, and of course Kennedy's promise that we would put a man on the moon by the end of the decade, uh, but it's impossible. It is just physically, scientifically impossible to reach the moon from this planet. Uh, the Van Allen belt. And and, and 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 a number of the of the reasons we we could not possibly manage that. Uh, so when they approached you, Donald Rumsfeld and and Kissinger and whomever it was, they told you that going to the moon was it was an impossibility. So why didn't they just tell the truth and say we can't go to the moon? I don't understand why they faked it. Wait, wait. Because my ego also got in the way. I couldn't help feeling not only that this was a great honor a kind of warped honor but still an honor it was very flattering to be told that i was the only person who could do this and i probably even agreed with them uh it was just too challenging to pass up because i love a challenge okay well back up you said something about your ego too that explains why did the why did america not just it say it's impossible if it's impossible it's impossible but why did they? Fa I, I still don't understand the motivation. They they wanted to fake it because why? A massive power trip. What can I tell you? I mean, they just uh, they cold, needed cold this. Cold War, the money. Cold War, the money invested. Yeah, because of the Cold War, because of the uh, uh, of the uh, uh, competition with the Russians. Uh, because so much money had already been invested in it into it. Uh, they just, they felt the need. Okay. They felt the need to perpetrate this fraud on the American people, and they didn't. I don't think they lost a whole lot of sleep over it, frankly. Okay. I lost more sleep over it probably than they did, and that was, even that was later. And you lost sleep over it. Why? What's your moral issue with it? You did it to be a patriot? You did it to serve your country? I mean, why did you do it, and why did you lose sleep over it? I did it. I, I think I already mentioned that I did it as an artist because I was my ego was swept away by the by the compliments, by the flattery they gave me, 
that I was the only person who could do it. Uh, you also wanted that compensation. And yes, I did have some compensation. Which was what? Well, the most rewarding compensation for me personally was a lens that... Uh, no, just pick, pick up. Good, you're doing great. That's a small thing. It's the carte blanche deal you got. You got to deal with the devil. Any movie you wanted to make for the rest of your life right. without interference. Right. The lens is a, is a little side issue okay. of it all. Important. All right, so I know it is important, but it, that's not, it's okay. not, it is, you had the ultimate dream. Any movie you wanted to make whenever without any interference for the rest of your life. Right. That was the deal. It's, it's the deal. It's a Faustian bargain. Right. Okay, so what was your compensation? You must have been obviously compensated. I mean, you paid. I mean, what? Yes, well, I was promised, uh, basically the rest of my career that I would not be interfered with on any single project, which, you know, that's like mother's milk to me. I mean, I just, I, I lapped that up. It, it was one well, of the I suppose any, film, any filmmaker, any filmmaker wants that. What's that? Any filmmaker would exactly, want that. Exactly. Exactly. And I was promised this carte blanche for the rest of my life. So you're saying the reason why you're one of the few, or if only filmmaker in Hollywood that enjoys final cut and virtually no studio interference is because of... of my cooperation with the government, yes. And that's, that's pretty much true, yes. Also, in addition to that, I was making, about to make a film called Barry Lyndon, which I wanted to photograph in direct candlelight. And there was no way to do it. And the lenses like, and weren't the, the lenses, lenses they weren't not, fast enough, right? Okay. They, they would not they would not accommodate it. So NASA promised me and gave me a lens, a special lens, which they used to photograph the moon for me to film Barry Lyndon. I, I think the images were exquisite. I'm very proud of that film. It's a beautiful film. Oh yes. And uh but it, uh, uh, okay, I'm but, sorry. but 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 and, and I love and I love to speak about all your films at length. But I, I'm I'm just let's just. T but it's what? but isn't it interesting though that no one ever used that lens again after Barry Lyndon. It stands alone. It it hovers there in the middle of the seventies. This this unique. Well, it was it was. Like a, I images. think it was a, that was like a five million dollar lens or something. It was. It was but it was never used again, yes, because it was promised to me and only to me for that one film. Okay, well, let's, again, step back a couple of steps. Okay, the big question, okay, now I understand why I signed a non-disclosure, and now I understand the 15-year thing very clearly. Why are you telling me this? I mean, I'm, I'm a nobody, so I don't, not, I don't really understand that part. But more than that, why, why are you telling anybody this? I mean, this is, you, you're admitting complicity... I mean, I'm processing this now, but it's sort of a fraud. No offense, sir. I mean, it's... Well, I'm concerned about my upcoming film, Eyes Wide Shut. I don't think I'm going to have as much of a say in the final edit and the release of that film. I thought you had a final cut. What do you mean? You... Well, I just have a sense that I, for some reason, I have a sense that it's not going that way with this one. Okay. This is a movie... It's, a, it's very symbolic, and people are going to say it's about sex, the sexual underworld, and things like that. But it's actually about secrets. I see. Okay, that, is that, that's, that's what Eyes Wide Shut means. All mean. kinds of secrets, yeah. Okay, so Eyes Wide Shut refers to, like, the monkey, no monkey see, no, you know, like kind of ignorance of secrets. It's a contradiction in terms. Sure. Uh, of, uh, obviously, yeah. Obviously, yes. Of people's eyes. Seeming to be open, but in reality, or, or people not want not wanting to know the truth. Exactly. So, so you're are you contending that people don't want to know the truth about the world, reality, the moon landings? Are you saying it's a people metaphor? People want to want to believe in ideals, and that's understandable up to a, a degree. People want to believe in ideals, but, and if but the the government knowing this takes advantage of it by perpetrating fraud after fraud after fraud. Okay, well, and 
let's not get too even the political, but you're saying so. The, you're saying that the government used you as a tool to yes. film. With my willingness, I admit, I, my my partner, I was willing, a willing participant, a willing puppet, if you will. But why? And again, I I know there's rumblings on the internet about this rumor, but I, I, it's lasted now what thirty two years? I mean, it's nineteen ninety nine now. That's sixty nine. It's what? It's actually, thirty years exactly. 30 years, Wait, yes. How has this secret uh, persisted? I mean, no one's spilled the beans. I mean, how? That seems impossible. I mean, what? What? what well, I mean, I guess we can't speculate about how the secret's been held. Why are why are you choosing to break the secret? I mean, with the 15 years incorporating that factor, why, why not just tell people now? Have CNN come right now and tell them. I mean, is there a reason? Is there a reason that you want to tell the world this? It must well, I I chose you. I trust you because I've worked with you before. Well, you, know, you trust me because I'm a nobody that you can control. And you've dealt with my father for financing on films and, and stuff like that. But you know, since I'm a well, nobody, so because I'm a nobody, you can control and get the 15 year thing. No offense to me. Say, you can say something like that. So, uh, with, why tell the world now? Why not just go to CNN? I mean, uh, and remember, you want a delay. You don't want, because you don't want all the attention all, that'll bring now. You want it 15 years after your death. You want this to come out 15 years after your death. Right. When you're dead and buried, and your wife is either dead or close to death, and your sister's fully, and your daughter's fully grown. That's when you want it to come out. So talk about how that, like, you're you're it's a, you're burying a time capsule of truth that will explode in 15 years after your death. Explain that part. So why 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 tell me and and why delay it 15 years? I mean, I, what's your motivation? I I'm not ready, and I'm sure a lot of other people aren't ready to have this information revealed right now. So I'm putting it off. So, uh, to, uh, I don't expect to be alive in another 15 years. Um, but it'll be 30 years then. I, well, I mean, it's it's your death plus 15, so you could die in 20 years from now. I mean, it could be 35 years that people find this out. The longer, the better. It, it's common sense, Tom. You don't want your family and your work to be sullied by this. That's why you want the right. distance. Okay, all right. It's because this is not this is common right, sense. All right, all right, all right. Why, why are you telling me now on why the delay? I mean, I, what, what, I don't really understand your motive. I'm I'm sensitive to uh, the lives of others around me. I don't want my family to be affected by this. Uh, I don't want any reputations to be sullied. Uh, I just think it's better if it if it's delayed okay that explains the delay and and you're telling but why are you telling the world well, why does the world need to know that the moon landings aren't real and you fake them i mean what are you guilty i mean what would smart i mean? am guilty but i more than that i believe in truth my movies were always about truth and not necessarily pleasant truth very often uh, very ugly truth uh i i can't I can't sell that in a movie and live something that's the opposite. It's it's hypocritical. Uh, Is it why you left the states? Yes, yes. There's a there's a a, 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 a corruption. Okay. You can have it if you want. There's a a corruption that's just uh, an insidious kind of corruption. That's is, unique to America. And, uh, yes, absolutely. That doesn't mean it won't spread to other countries. But right now, I think it's beginning here. There's sir, do you, do you need? I'm sorry. Do you need water or something? Sir? No, I'm fine. You, you have. All right. You can offer me a drink. Let's get into the drink thing. So, you, do you need any water or anything? Do you need water? Are you okay? No. Would you like something? Uh, I, I. Well, you have. Do you, uh, water would be. This is almost done. Yeah, we'll make you another one. We'll freshen that up. Um, we'll get a PA. Um, okay, so, okay, I'm just trying to put this together here because I know my I only have an hour with you. Um, you, okay, first of all, you became a recluse around this time. Is this related to you becoming very shy about interviews and, and the press? Very and much, and it also was uh, uh, conducive to reflection and introspection and 
yes, that would lead to a lot of, of guilt. And what, your family, how is your family now, obviously? I discussed it with my wife, yes. And what, what is her view on it? She understands. We don't necessarily agree on everything, but she certainly understands. She was part of this every every step of the way, and uh, she certainly understands. Okay. Um, when I came to interview you six months ago, um, you basically, I mean, politely, but essentially kicked me out and said to come back in six, seven months, which, you no, know, I'm here. No offense, I mean, but you look a bit uh, overworked. All right, I don't know. I mean, your hair was shorter. Uh, you look like you had bathed. I know that it's not big in Europe here or England, but uh, are you overworked? Are you stressed out? I mean, something psychological? I, well, uh, eyes wide shut was very was 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 in a, a very exhausting is, shoot. Is, is. Oh, oh, you're right. Was a shoot. Was you a know, very exhausting this. shoot. And uh, say again from the top. So you look you look exhausted and and, and very. Uh, are you? Yeah, I, eyes wide shut was a very trying shoot. Um, in fact, it, it it spread to others on the set. I mean, poor Tom Cruise actually developed an ulcer working on that film. And I, I hear his marriage might be on the rocks, but that's just media. That may that, be, but that's, that's beside the point. Okay. I love them both very much, Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. Okay. Very fine people. Um, but uh, I'm sorry, what was the question? Well, my question is, does this this whole secret about, I mean, which I'm still wrapping my head around, is that the causation for your very eccentric J.D. Salinger-like behavior? I mean, you just, you don't give interviews, you don't. You're it's hard. not quite as extreme as J.D. Salinger, but yes, it, it's I, I have I've, I've I've made a habit, a long time habit of avoiding uh, the press. Though I have given interviews, usually uh, print interviews as opposed to tape or film. The 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 moon the fake moon landing. The 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 rumor about the fake moon landing. You're saying is not a rumor or not uh, no, um, is not an urban legend. It's, you're saying it's true. It, yes, I, I'm sorry. I thought you knew that. <laughs> but, I, I uh, no, I didn't. I mean, I've heard it. Like anyone else has yeah. heard it, but you. Uh, oh okay. yeah, it was it was fake. Wait, wait, okay. And uh, I thought okay, I have written down, and I thought you agreed to talk about Barry Lyndon. We talk, you agreed about the killing, uh, Clockwork Orange. I mean, all, we're going to cover all these films, and I, and I hope we still can. But what you're telling me is this. Because uh, I've never, I think it would make the news if you, you're telling me now for the first time, and why me, why not, why not CNN, or what, Well, what? the rumors were true. Okay. Okay, well, I obviously want to understand what the hell you're, I, I'm sorry, what you're talking about here. Okay, but why are you that telling me? Landings, I'm a nobody, the moon, like. The moon landings were fake. Okay, and I want to hear what the hell, I'm sorry, what the hell you're, I don't know, I, tell me how, what, when, where, I'd like to hear the story about this, but. You're, why are you telling me? I mean, and is that so? That's the 15 year thing. So that makes sense now. That's why you won't, I can't release this for 15 years. That makes total sense now. Yes. Okay. <laughs> because you have a super big secret that you're basically using me to conceal and then release like a time release time bomb. And uh, my upcoming Thanks. my upcoming film, Eyes Wide Shut, is all about secrecy. Um, it's it's. It, it takes place in the sexual underground, but it's really about secrecy. Okay, well, before we even talk about the meta of secrecy, like, what the Fs are, like, wait, because start from the beginning here. Secrecy, can you, can you start from the beginning? Like, secrecy. Okay, but let's take a look at the beginning. The, we didn't land on the moon, you're saying, and you fell. No, we didn't land on the moon. Okay, so I, this, I was born in no, 71. Nobody landed I was on the born in 71. I didn't see that stuff anyway, so just... How about you walk me through it? If you have, just indulge me here. We'll just do it quickly, or as quickly as we can. You, how did something like this start? Does someone just do you apply to an ad to do to film the moon landings? No, like what? I was contacted by NASA. Okay, uh, when, uh, when, where, why? I mean, what happened? In be, uh, it's the part. Before I started making two thousand one, so in the mid '60s, sometime um, after Kennedy said his thing, you're saying. Well, considerably after then, yeah, and and uh, they had seen Doctor Strange Love, and uh, I had originally requested uh, 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 use of the B fifty two to film 
part of D, uh, Dr. Strangelove and they refused, but they were very impressed by the, the final... Uh, mm, the great film. I mean, great film. It's, it's one of my personal favorites, yes. Yeah. They were very impressed by the look but of it. They wouldn't let you use a B-52 that you asked for, right? You asked no, they to do would it. not. Why not? I mean, well then, so you had one Rocky. Uh, was it Rocky? It's like, just force of habit, I think. They're just very secretive. Okay. And, Keeping but, in with the theme of... But yet, even though they denied you there, you're saying, well, what, so when you're doing 2001, like, obviously, that's the space movie. That, so you're saying when you're doing the space movie, they, they contacted you then? I mean, is there, obviously there's a relationship between that? Yes, that's right. Okay, so what happened? Um, and they were planning this, this fake moon landing. They wanted But why a, did they have to fake it? Why? Because it is impossible to get to the moon. If it's you ask any scientist, we okay. couldn't do it. Okay. There's the Van Allen belt, which is, it, 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 it's impossible to get past. Okay. Uh, if you think of how, of our space program and how many trips we have made since the alleged moon landing. Right. It, it, they stopped in 1972. What, what sense does that even make that if we went there, what, three or four times? between 69 and 72 mm -hmm. and haven't gone since nor has anyone else not even the russians it just it's a little bit of a stretch of the imagination to think that we we did you know why would we not go or, or no it's other impossible country to, because it's impossible to go uh we the the furthest anyone has ever been off this planet is about 400 miles wow the moon is what several hundred it's a quarter thousand, a quarter million yes miles away it's just not possible it wasn't possible in 1969 and it's not possible now so you say we you say we can't go to the moon oh, i mean what are the reasons are there some like facts you want reasons i'll give you reasons yeah, you, how much time do you have okay i had actually uh talked a little bit to lbj before but it was mainly nixon uh he had just become president at the, uh, he was elected in late 68, mm -hmm. uh, 69, he took office. And, uh, you know, it, it's no secret that NASA always wanted to fulfill this Kennedy prophecy that we would get to the moon by the end of the decade. Well, time was running out. It was 1969. And... Uh, so, so you met Nixon? You went to the yeah, White House? I met Pat, actually, first. I think she was on painkillers or something. Um, but, uh, it, you know, she never, never say, said much, so, you know... It was nothing worth repeating, but uh, yeah, when I met with Nixon, boy, that was a, that was an experience. Yeah, he, did, uh, they just shelled you in privately because obviously they couldn't have you. No one could know you were meeting with him. Yeah, he, he had his shoes off, which you know, and he could smell his feet, so it was just really kind of amazing. You know, it, it, it was not anything I could have predicted. So it was a casual encounter. Okay, it was in the Oval Office. Yeah, in the Oval Office, yes, and. Um, but it's funny, it's an oval office because the walls seem to be closing in anyway. But <laughs> anyway, uh, there we were, and he, he, he was, you know, like he was, uh, expressing how desperate he was to, to I mean, go to the moon, not say? literally go to I mean, the moon, what'd he but, say? but to, to, to have people think we were going to the moon. What? He was worried about, uh, well, his own perception because he just became president. And his, uh, his, uh, so what, what did he say? He, he, he said that um, he, he you know, looked at his drink kind of like this and said, um, we're, we have to fake, this, we have to fake this, this moon landing just to keep interest in NASA. And in the, time, and in the next few years, we might actually be able to go for real. Come on. Because we wouldn't give up. Oh, we'd still work on it. We would still be working on it, trying to, to, to make this trip possible. But we have to do it now. No, we were because they were so close, you know. Because yeah. we were so damn because we were so damn close. We had to do it now. And if you didn't lie, you know, it would dry up. We were on the brink of something. Yes, and if if we didn't if we didn't fake this, if we didn't lie about it, eventually people would lose interest and it, the funding would dry up for NASA. It would just cease to exist. The dream. And the dream would be dead. It would be gone. The greatest thing in the world for this country would be to go to the moon. And 
that being gone, it would be just devastating for for uh, the, the national mood. It's about money. And the, about... yeah. And so, you know, yeah, I'm just giving you lines. So it was about the money. It was about the morale. Yeah, it was about it was about morale. It was about money. It was about money. It was about morale, chiefly money, uh, as most things are, and uh, that's what that's what was. And he 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 was you know, like he was uh, expressing how. Desperate he was to to I mean, go to the moon, not say? literally go to I mean, the moon. What did he say? But, but to 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 have people think we were going to the moon, what? he was worried about uh, well his own perception because he just became president. After all, there had been a, a an accident. So Nixon uh, sat me down first. He complimented me on two thousand one, which was nice to hear. Uh, and he said, speaking of space, going to the moon. He, and he told me about the the plan. Yeah, he sat me down, uh, complimented me in 2001, and then he said, and he was already drinking, so I, I decided to join him. I don't remember what I had because I drink almost anything. Um, he ha he was drinking Dewar's, I think. Which, I mean, if you're going to drink Scotch, okay, but Dewar's, I don't know. Anyway, uh, he complimented me on 2001, and then he said, speaking of space. Uh, you know about uh, President Kennedy's prediction of going to the moon by the end of the decade. Well, it's almost like a mandate. Like, he sort yes. of like, you know, threw the gauntlet down. And he said, well, time is running out, and we want to do that. But we can't. It's impossible. We tried. Uh, uh, we've been testing this for years. As you may have heard, uh, uh, there was a, a launch pad accident in, in 1967 in which... Uh, the famous Gus Grissom was killed and two other astronauts. Uh, Gus was a good guy. But anyway, uh, and it can't be done. We, we, we talked to every scientist imaginable. It just cannot be done. But, after seeing your film, I am convinced, and the gentlemen at NASA are also convinced, that you can help us make people believe that we have been to the moon and back. And you must have been startled at that moment. Okay. Actually, a little bit, but I also knew where this was going, and I thought, what? a trip. What a trip this is for me, as an artist. Okay, you're still young and wide-eyed. I couldn't help it. Okay. It's part of being, it's like the, uh, it, it's the DNA or something of an artist. Like your adrenaline got going. Yes. Your juice is flowing. Okay. Yeah. Go on. And I was excited. All right, he didn't on. even have to finish, but he did. Uh, and explained to me that he wanted me to uh, uh, film fake a fake landing with Fake astronaut, well, not re real astronauts, but fake uh, faking the exploration of space. So Nixon, the ne this was this part was next. This next part was hard for him to say. Oh, me. He, 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 you know, looked at his drink kind of like this and said, um, we're, "We have to fake this. We have to fake this this moon landing 
just to keep interest in NASA and in the time and in the next few years we might actually be able to go for real. Come on. But we wouldn't give up. No. Still work on it. We would still be working on it, trying to, to, to make this trip possible. But we have to do it now. No, we were because they were so close, you know. Because yeah. we were so damn because we were so damn close. We had to do it now. And if you didn't lie, you know, it would dry up. We were on the brink of something. Yes, and if if we didn't if we didn't fake this, if we didn't lie about it, eventually people would lose interest and it, the funding would dry up for NASA. It would just cease to exist. And the dream. And the dream would be dead. It would be gone. The greatest thing in the world for this country would be to go to the moon. And that being gone, it would be just devastating for, for uh, the, the national mood. It was about... It was about morale it was about money it was about money it was about morale chiefly money as most things are nixon uh sat me down first he complimented me on 2001 which was nice to hear uh and he said speaking of space going to the moon he and he told me about the the plan uh and he was already drinking so i, I decided to join him I don't remember what I had because I drink almost anything. Um, he ha he was drinking Dewar's, I think, which, I mean, if you're going to drink scotch, okay, but Dewar's, I don't know. Anyway, uh, he complimented me on 2001, and then he said, speaking of space, uh, you know about uh, President Kennedy's prediction of going to the moon by the end of the decade. Well, it was almost like a mandate. Like, he sort yes. of like, you know, threw the gauntlet down. And he said, well, time is running out, and we want to do that. But we can't. It's impossible. We tried. Uh, uh, we've been testing this for years. As you may have heard, uh, uh, there was a, a launch pad accident in, in 1967 in which uh, the famous Gus Grissom was killed and two other astronauts. Uh, Gus was a good guy, but anyway, uh, and it can't be done. We, we, we talked to every scientist imaginable. It just cannot be done. But after seeing your film, I am convinced and the gentlemen at NASA are also convinced that you can help us make people believe that we have been to the moon and back. And you must have been startled at that moment. Okay. Actually, a little bit, but I also knew where this was going and I thought, what a trip. What a trip this is for me as an artist. Okay, you were still young and wide-eyed. I couldn't help it. Okay. It's part of being, it's like the, uh, it, it's the DNA or something of an artist. Like your adrenaline got going. Yes. The juice is fine. Okay. Yeah. Go on. And I was excited. All right, he go didn't on. even have to finish, but he did. Uh, and explained to me that he wanted me to uh, film fake a fake landing with fake astronauts. Well, not re real astronauts, but fake uh, faking the exploration of space. Be because they just knew they couldn't get there. Because there was just no way we could get there. Because they just knew they couldn't get there. Because there was just no way we could get there. And the political, I mean, they'd spent all that money, I guess. And yes. There was a political brinksmanship going yeah, of on. Course, of course, Nixon wanted to uh, make a big splash. It was early in his presidency. Yeah, and, that would have uh, made him look really he, like a failure. He, yeah, he wanted to, uh, okay. yeah, he wanted his uh, approval points up. And he thought nothing could do it better than this to fulfill this dream that America has had as a country since uh, the Kennedy years. And the political, I mean, they'd spent all that money, I guess. And yes. There was a political brinksmanship going yeah, of on. Course, of course, Nixon wanted to uh, make a big splash. It was early in his presidency. Yeah, and, that would have uh, made him look really he, like a failure. He, yeah, he wanted to, uh, okay. yeah, he wanted his uh, approval points up. And he thought nothing could do it better than this to fulfill this dream that America has had as a country since uh, the Kennedy years. Okay, so you're saying the motivation was PR? PR, absolutely. Plain and simple, okay. PR. 
Okay, so you're saying the motivation was PR. PR, absolutely. Plain and simple. Okay. PR. All right. And the geopolitical chess match between Russia that was going on, it would have weakened yes. their position, so to speak. Yes. Um, and, and I guess that money... Was background. That was great background for the story. Yes. There's also, it must have been about because money. Because there was still a, money, a, a, a red fear, a, you know, a, a communist fear among the people. Right. Sure, that was right. You're coming to the food. Yeah. yeah. Sure. I mean, missile crisis and all that. Okay. But it's also really about, like anything else, about money. I mean, they, they'd spent, well, the equivalent of a billion, almost a trillion of our dollars now on this program. Yes. In addition so, to being I mean, impossible have... and, 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 and unsafe, it was also uh, terribly expensive. But no, no what I'm saying is amazing. that it, it was so expensive that to fail would not, quote unquote, not be an option. In other words, at a certain point, you spend so much taxpayer money. I, I, I mean, my question I'm asking is, is Nixon motivated, whoever these men that decided this, this to perpetrate this fraud, was it the money? In other words, if you, you can't go to the, can't, or maybe you can, I don't know. Can you go to the American people after spending a trillion dollars and say, we've got nothing to show for it? No. So Obviously. It, but I'm saying is how much of that was the motivation? Of course, that was, that was a huge part of it. A huge part of it. I think this was hard for him to get out, this this next part. Uh, but he said the, the NASA's funds are just drying up. Yeah, he goes in for the big clothes and he says, you got to do it. And he, what, guilts you about we merit patriotism? have to save NASA. Okay. It was in deep trouble. And uh, this, Wh this was... Why was it in deep trouble? Spent so damn much money, uh, billions and billions of dollars. Uh, this would save them. This great PR would it, save them. It, it was hard for him to uh, to say this next part. He was uh, looking into his drink, kind of like I am now. And uh, finally, he said that uh, we can't tell people the truth. That we can't get to the moon. It would be disastrous for NASA. Uh, their their funding would, would dry up. People wouldn't have faith in them anymore. They just it would be like a, a well, wait, complete, in faith. It would be over. Failure. Right? It would be over. Yes, it would be absolutely over. So if we fake this this moon landing, it would do nothing but increase the reputation and. It was obviously something I never expected, and I was blown away. And yes, I was, I was, I was also much younger than I am now, and I was on a bit of an ego trip of my own. And what did they say? And how did they put it to you? I mean, what was what was their pitch? I mean, what what is it? What got you? The, something must have got you. I mean, or did you say yes right away? I mean, how did it go? Well, yeah, they they dangled some fruit in front of me, you know, and I'm. I grabbed it. But, I told you about the promises. Right. Know? But but what, what moral problems? I mean, right away you knew it was a lie. But no, what, I didn't right away. I was too overwhelmed. I was too... I was too blown away, simply blown away by the privilege of it, the challenge of it, the honor of it. Okay, um, I guess it was flattering to be yes, the only... Yes, absolutely. You can't imagine. You just cannot imagine. So they came to you and said, oh, you're the what greatest until player. Later? Because to me, it was the ultimate, the fucking ultimate challenge. It is. I mean, because, I mean, film If I could fool people with this, yeah. then I am the greatest film artist of the 20th century. Or any century. I mean, it's, or it's, any century. no, I, I will be in a way it's taking film to the meta level. It's it's there's documentary, there's fiction. We know documentaries are real. We know fictions are fake. We there's suspend disbelief. Parallel with it. But that's my point is it's yeah, like the ultimate exactly. hybrid. That's my point. Exactly. There is nothing parallel with it. So creatively and artistically, you saw this sort of a once in a many lifetime opportunity yep. to play with all these billions of dollars to make the ultimate movie that no one even knew was a movie. Right. Certainly only in, certainly in that, in that, uh, in that century.
All right. And the geopolitical chess match between Russia that was going on, it would have weakened yes. their position, so to speak. Yes. Um, and, uh, and I guess that money... Was background. That was great background for the story. Yes. There's also, it must have been about money. Because I mean, there was, was still a, money, a, a, a red fear, a, you know, a, a communist fear among the people. Right. Sure, that was right. You're coming to the food, yeah. yeah. Sure. I mean, missile crisis and all that. Okay. But it's also really about, like anything else, about money. I mean, they, they'd spent... Well, the equivalent of a billion, almost a trillion of our dollars now on this program. Yes. In addition so, to being I mean, impossible have... and, 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 and unsafe, it was also uh, terribly expensive. But no, what, no, what I'm saying is that it, it was so expensive that to fail would not, quote unquote, not be an option. In other words, at a certain point, you spend so much taxpayer money. If, I, I, I mean, my question I'm asking is, is Nixon motivated, whoever these men that decided this, this to perpetrate this fraud, was it the money? In other words, if you, you can't go to the, can't, or maybe you can, I don't know. Can you go to the American people after spending a trillion dollars and say, we've got nothing to show for it? No. So Obviously. It, but I'm saying is, how much of that was the motivation? Of course, that was, that was a huge part of it. A huge part of it. It was hard for him to, uh, to say this next part. He was... Uh, I think this was hard for him to get out. Finally, he said that uh, we can't tell people the truth, that we can't get to the moon. It would be disastrous for NASA. Uh, their, their funding would, would dry up. People wouldn't have faith in them anymore. They just, it would be like a... a well, wait, wait, in complete, faith, it would be over, failure. right? It would be over. Yes, it would be absolutely over. So if we fake this, this moon landing, it would do nothing but increase the reputation. You know, looked at his drink kind of like this and said, um, we're, we have to fake this, we have to fake this, this moon landing just to keep interest in NASA and in the time, and in the next few years, we might actually be able to go for real. Come on. But we wouldn't give up. No. Still work on it. We would still be working on it, trying to, to to make this trip possible. But we have to do it now. If we didn't, if we didn't fake this, if we didn't lie about it, eventually people would lose interest, and it, the funding would dry up for NASA. It would just cease to exist. The dream. And the dream would be dead. It would be gone. The greatest thing in the world for this country would be to go to the moon, and that being gone. It would be just devastating for, for uh, the, the national mood. About, it was about morale. It was about money. It was about money. It was about morale. Chiefly money, uh, as most things are. So you're an expert in photography, clearly, and you use cinematography. So you're telling me that, like 2001, the moon landings were no, no different, essentially, except... We know that 2001's a, a story in the fiction, but you, you, you're essentially saying you went from one set, space set, to another space set? I mean, what, what, what was that like? I mean, what, yes, what was the well, experience like doing 2001 was great training for uh, the moon landing fakery.
I mean, what were some of the, I mean, well, well, then if you would, can you tell me about the experience of doing this? I mean, was it a good experience? Was it a bad experience while you were doing it? At was the it time, ch- it was, to me, it was another job. It was very challenging. Um, it was the ultimate challenge to pull the, that. That was the moral dilemma is that you, 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 to do it right, you had to fake everyone, but to do it right meant you had to be the, the worst, or the best liar. So let's right. talk about the, the, these conflicts, okay? Right. So doing it, what was the process of doing it like? Was it what was it like just making another film? No. Well, every every film is a challenge, but this was the supreme challenge. Why? Because it was absolutely necessary, not only that people believe it, but they believe it in spite of the facts. Okay. Everything. I was filming was a lie on a grand scale and it was so it was such a for lack of a better word a rush an artistic aesthetic rush for me that the morality of it hardly entered into it at all maybe not at all while you were filming it while I was filming it yes in, other, in a way, it was another job, but at, at the same time, it was the ultimate job. It was it, the expectations were just so extraordinary. Okay, I mean, obviously, yeah, it must have been yeah. the biggest challenge of your life. Absolutely. I mean, a technical, not to get bogged down into the technical, but just to make it seem like it's really the surface of the moon. And yes. I mean, we must have been technical challenges. Yes, well, we on. used a lot of front screen projection. Right, the scotch light service. Which yes, you, well, exactly. And will you develop that technology or you perfected that technology during the 2001 shoot? That's right. right. Okay. And, and, and if you examine the... The photographs, the stills, you can see actually see the stitching in this in, in the in, in the background. You mean if you were to adjust gamma and contrast, you, you That's could right. Huh. Okay. Um It's it's actually almost kind of eerie. If you go in thinking, you know, expecting one thing and then come out with a whole different Okay, now we're going to talk about the fact that you were expected to do it perfectly and you wanted to do it perfectly, but part of you sabotaged yourself to leave clues. And we will do voiceovers of those clues, but I want you to talk about that. Okay. Okay, so in other words, okay, so as you did this, unlike, you know, a film flaw where there's a continuity issue or whatever, you couldn't afford to make a mistake if you were doing this. I mean, the government, it's the most expensive movie ever made, essentially. And instead of bad reviews, you could have gotten a federal indictment if it was found out. I mean, I don't know. So were you worried about making mistakes during it? I mean, I, I, what was your mindset while doing this? It must have been, was there creative conflicts? I mean, it, it, it must have been very difficult. I wasn't worried of mistakes because I'm a professional. And 
I have grown. I've gotten better every year with each film, every three or four years, but I've gotten better with each film. Uh, on this one, at first, I was swept away, of course, by the challenge and by the honor of it, by the, the flattery of it. But as I went along, I thought, hmm, just in case, maybe I should leave some clues here and there. Clue, that, like what clues? I mean, some, you, some obvious errors, obvious mistakes. Not really obvious, but to the to the discerning eye, to leave some clues here and there, like the stitching in the in the backdrops, like uh, differences in texture in lighting. Uh, if you look at the the moon surface beyond a certain line. There was every everything was blurred. Oh, okay. Like so stones oh, I on see. The, on the supposed surface of the moon, the rocks were bright, c clear as anything on this side of the line, but on the other side, immediately you couldn't see them anymore. So, in other words, you embedded the technical, um, the technical, you the, the irreconcilable paradox of parallax, for example. I mean, exactly. You, you know, anyone parallax. with Photoshop can, I mean, I haven't done it, or but someone could examine those photos and easily measure the distances and angles. I mean, exactly. are you tell? So you're, you're telling me? I mean, it would take a very technical eye to do that. I mean, most people would not notice it at all. Right, and is that well? Okay, so let me just get my head around. So one thing, for example, is all the shadows would have to be in one direction, for example. Right, but they weren't. Okay. Because, and there, didn't, because didn't... there was artificial light being used. Not the light from the moon. It just wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have worked that You're way. You're saying you use fill lights and yes. nobody at the government noticed that a fill light would violate a basic tenet. I mean, you have the sun is the only light when you're up in the in the moon and you're using fill light because it... Why? Because it, obviously because it created better shots. If you yes. Did, if, so, so you were aware that you were actually doing something technically shadows, correct? Shadows would converge it, well, yeah. at, at some points, which would not have happened with, you know, light from, from the moon or some one source. Right. Okay. So in other words, certain errors well, that you should have made. Nobody was that keenly aware of it. But do you feel like now with technology and computers that things like this could be more easily revealed? I mean... Yes, but at this point, I don't care. And hence, that's why you're telling me. Exactly. Now, again, you're not sick. You don't have any terminal disease. No. Not so And so, way. in other words, since, since I guess you don't, no one knows when they're going to die, this feels like a deathbed confession, but you're obviously not near death. I hope not. And hence, the burying it with the paperwork that I signed, unawares of why, but the 15-year moratorium on, on, on disclosing this. With, so I think you put in a $3 million clause of a fine, whatever. But the, the point is now I, I completely understand why you did that. Uh, but you must have been, you, you, you must be wrestling with this uh, issue. Is, is, there, is there, besides guilt, is there anger? Is there any other types of emotions that you're experiencing? I mean, what has it been like to having to carry this for so long? Have, have you put it in your other films? Have you as, sublimated it? As, um... As sleazy as it may seem on the surface, um, on the part of the government I'm talking about, I really don't have anybody to blame but myself. What do you mean? Well, I made the decision. I, I could have turned them down. I could have said no. I mean, what was their pitch to you? I mean, they came in own, and said... From my own sense of not just as an artist, but as a... Uh, a person who wanted power within this within this art form. I mean, I was promised things that I needed, and that that just eclipsed everything else. Any kind of any kind of conscience, any kind of sense of of rightness about it. If I was conscious of it, I don't think I was on the surface. Maybe underneath. But I put it aside. Do you think it's wrong what you did? I do, yes. Why? 
Why? Yeah, why, why? I mean, you... you I, I think it's obvious why, but... I mean, the guy perpetrating a fraud is always wrong. Even if it's for the right reason? It's I mean, not for the right reasons, though. This wasn't for the right reasons. Well, let me take devil's advocate. They, they wanted to, they faked it because if they would have admitted the truth, well, immediately NASA's funding would have dried up and they would have never gotten to the moon. But now I think about it, we still haven't but gotten to the moon. they didn't. Right. So you, do you think it was a sincere... Fraud? I mean, in other words, do you think the government... Power just does strange things to people. When you have the ability to do something, some people just find it difficult not to do extraordinary things. They don't have to do them, but they do them because they can. So you're saying it's... You're, so, it, I mean, no, no no, pun intended, but... And I know it's guilty. Okay, so in other words, you're saying, like, no pun intended, those rockets aren't foul symbols for no reason. It was like a, it was a, it's an ego thing by these men in power. Absolutely, very well put. Well, why don't you put it? Why do you think the government did it? Why did Nixon do it then? What, what, what was his motive, do you think? Do you think, it, obviously, he didn't care about Kennedy's promise. He wanted. Well, Nixon is a whole other story. Right, but he ultimately had the final say, modestly. Right. So, what, why he could have chose to tell the truth, he chose to perpetrate a fraud, and we know he did other frauds, obviously. But why? Well, what was their moral justification? What did they say to you? I mean, you said no to them at first, or yes? What happened? How did it go down? When they came to you right away, what was their pitch, and what did you? How did you react? And and you're telling, but why are you telling the world? Well, why does the world need to know that? The moon landings aren't real, and you fake them. I mean, what? Are you guilty? I mean, what's my? I am guilty, but I. More than that, I believe in truth. My movies were always about truth, and not necessarily pleasant truth. Very often, uh, very ugly truth. Uh, I I can't I can't sell that in a movie and live something that's the opposite. It's it's hypocritical. Uh, is it why you left the states? Yes, yes. There's a there's a a, 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 a corruption. Okay. You can have it if you want. There's a a corruption that's just uh, an insidious kind of corruption. Which that's is, unique to America. And, uh, yes, absolutely. That doesn't mean it won't spread to other countries, but right now. I think it's beginning here. Sir, do you, do you need? I'm sorry. Do you need water or something? Sir? No, I'm fine. You, you have. All right. You can offer me a drink. Let's get into the drink thing. So, you, do you need any water or anything? Do you need water? Are you okay? No. Would you like something? Uh, I. I. Well, you have. Do you, I, I, water would be. This okay. is almost done. Yeah, we'll, we'll make you another one. We'll freshen that up. Um, we'll get a PA. Um. Okay. So. Okay, I'm just trying to put this together here because I know my I only have an hour with you. Um, you. Okay, first of all, you became a recluse around this time. Is this related to you becoming very shy about interviews and, and the press? Very and much, and it also was uh, uh, conducive to reflection and introspection, and yes, that would lead to a lot of of guilt. And your family, how does your family know? Obviously, I discussed it with my wife. Yes. And what what is her view on it? She understands. We don't necessarily agree on everything, but she certainly understands. She was part of this every every step of the way, and uh, she certainly understands. Okay. Um, when I came to interview you six months ago, um, you basically, I mean, politely. But essentially kicked me out and said to come back in six, seven months, which, no, I'm here. No offense, I mean, but you look a bit uh, overworked. All right, I don't know. I mean, your hair was shorter. Uh, you look like you had bathed. I know that it's not big in Europe here or England, but uh, are you overworked? Are you stressed out? I mean, something psychological? I, I'm, well, uh, Eyes Wide Shut was very... Was, was was in a, a very exhausting is, shoot. Is, is. Oh, oh, you're right. Was a shoot. Was you a know, very doing exhausting it. shoot. And uh, say again from the top. So you look you look exhausted and and, and very. Uh, are you? Yeah, I, eyes wide shut was a very trying shoot. 
Um, in fact, it, it, it spread to others on the set. I mean, poor Tom Cruise actually developed an ulcer working on that film. And I hear his marriage might be on the rocks, but that's just media. That may be, but that's, that's beside the point. Okay. I love them both very much, Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. Okay. Very fine people. Um, but uh, I'm sorry, what was the question? Well, my question is, does this this whole secret about, I mean, which I'm still wrapping my head around, is that the causation for your very eccentric J.D. Sound, your like behavior? I mean, you just, you don't give interviews, you don't. Your it's heart. not quite as extreme as J.D. Salinger, but yes, it, it's I, I have I've, I've I've made a habit, a long time habit of avoiding uh, the press. Though I have given interviews, usually uh, print interviews as opposed to tape or film. One side issue. Yes. When I talk or anything, or even when you talk. Put your glasses down a bit and look over your glasses and tilt your head down. That's the only thing I noticed about him that he does. Okay. So it's like this. It's kind of like a look like that. Do Arch your eyebrows a bit. Over now? No, 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 no. You're doing great. Okay. Just something that I want to include because I just want that. That's like a thing. Like it's a kind of an. It's kind of a, a nod down. Yes. And a little bit of a thing. Okay. okay You're doing so great. You're doing great. Um, so um, again, so you just not even if you're looking at me, even if you're talking, it's kind of like one of the. Um, okay, so, uh, all right, sir, and I apologize because this is not where I thought the interview was going. Um, <laughs> so you're telling me that... Well, that's the nature of interviews, isn't it? Uh, well, I suppose, but I... I mean, it was it, it was very much similar to uh, Dustin Hoffman in Wag the Dog. Well, explain that a bit. Are, are, are you saying that Wag the Dog is... You think, I mean, obviously there's some people in the know that must be aware of this secret... Is Wag the Dog a reference to this or a reference to things like this? I have no inside information, but it certainly seems as if there's some kind of connection. Yes, uh, uh, Dustin Hoffman played this powerful producer who was contacted by... Well, the name of his character is Stanley, I believe. 